Season three ended with the Red Wedding, and we really saw, if not the downfall of, of House Stark, House Stark at its nadir, and the Lannisters at their at their peak, and um, the melting down of ice seemed to us one of the symbolic moments that really showed the Lannisters taking power for themselves. And you know, it's very evocative. We really wanted an opening that was word free. You know, just just let the images tell the story. And it seemed to us that it could be something really beautiful to show on screen. This is the sword that symbolizes the Stark family and the Stark family line, and melting it down to Tywin symbolizes his final victory, an ultimate ruthless victory over the Stark family, the kind of a total obliteration of a family line that's immortalized in the Lannister family song, The, the Reigns of Castamere. So this is just almost adding insult to injury that Tywin is melting down the sword, which has been a Stark cherished heirloom for generation after generation. This act is an act that's going to travel a story of Lannister power that gets propagated uh, from person to person. So it actually is a, a very rational thing to do from Tywin's perspective. He uh, shows that he understands how power works instinctively in a way that few men in this world do. Tell your father I'm here. And tell him the Lannisters aren't the only ones who pay their debts. It's a funny thing because Tyrion and Oberyn are both have a lot in common. I mean, uh, they are both second sons. They're both out of the line of, of succession. I mean, Tyrion far more so than Oberyn because Tyrion is, is uh, as he says himself, sort of a, a family embarrassment or family insult. They're very similar in many ways, including their feelings about the Lannister family. But Oberyn's hatred of Lannisters is much more pure than Tyrion's uh, hatred of certain Lannisters could ever be. And he's driven by a, a white hot anger beneath the affable, good time exterior. Oberyn is really driven by a kernel of, of rage and vengeance, which is, I think, what separates him from Tyrion. You know, I think we're so used to the various schemers and plotters um, um, that have congregated in King's Landing near the throne, and now comes this guy who's really kind of willing to do almost anything at any moment, and that introduces an, an air of uh, unpredictability, and the moment he hears that Oberyn's in town and not his older brother, Prince Duran, uh, he gets quite nervous because Oberyn is notorious for being hot-headed, and it was a lot of fun for us. I mean, it was a character that we've been looking forward to introducing for quite some time. I know him, the small one. His name is Pulliver. He captured us and took us to Harrenhal. Arya has undergone one of the most drastic transformations we've seen on the show, and the Arya that, that comes into this season is a very, very different person from the Arya we first met. And I think that she's sort of, at this point, an instrument of stark vengeance in the world, and the instrument that she is going to use to, to see that vengeance through, it only makes sense that it would be Needle, which is one of the two Stark swords left in the world. And when she sees this sword on Polliver, of course she knows, you know, she has to have this instrument back and she needs to kill the man who took it from her. She understands how wonderful it is for her to finally, after so many years of having things done to her and to the people she loves, how gratifying it must be to finally be able to start doing it back to people. It was intentional that we would begin the episode with the, the loss of one Stark sword and what Tywin thinks is the, the death of the, the Stark line and legacy and end it with finding another Stark sword and a kind of implied rebirth of that Stark ability to act in the world through Arya. Mm -hmm.